What's going on, y'all? It's Philly Celeb, and you tapped into Popcorn Matinee, Popcorn Conversations. Today's special guest is Frank Volk, one of the producers and actors of the new film, The Human Hibachi Part 2. This is the follow-up to the classic horror film, The Human Hibachi. Definitely tap in. There's going to be some jewels on this one. When they see you got that glow They love it when you're six feet in that hole Give you flowers when you can't feel it no more They bring roses when you can't smell them no more They hate you when they see you got that glow They love it when you're six feet in that hole Give you flowers when you can't feel it no more They bring roses when you can't smell them When I got the script, I really loved it. I really, I really fell in love with the script. And there's a there's a first Human Abachi that came out and won won a couple, you know, best feature film, uh, the horror film awards. And you know, and I knew I knew that my director Mario Soretto was was really good at what he did. And you know, and this script read really really well. Um, so when you know when we when we got further down the line with it, uh, he asked me if you know if I wanted to come on as a producer and and help kind of fun the film a little bit and uh and you know and, and i was i was more than happy to to jump at the opportunity so just so that you know we we can create something that you know we can really pull his vision together uh you know it was more it was more a little bit on um on just the funding side just to you know make sure that we have a product out there that you know that we're all proud of and you know and try to do the best that we possibly can uh so yeah i mean it wasn't it wasn't so much on on you know making this decision making while we're on set but he's also such a great director that he kind of just allows you to run freely with the character and i mean playing a you know psychotic uh cannibal it was it was a lot of fun to, to get into the headspace and and just really, uh, and then he would just, you know, allow you to kind of just run off and, and do your thing. So, but yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, it was first producer credit and I'm really, I'm really happy about it because it's a great film. What is your character's name in A Human Hibachi 2 and how did you prepare for the role? His name is Steve Hunt. Steve Hunt? Steve okay. Steve Hunt. Yeah. With the, with the, with the Hunt family. So it was very, I watched, I watched a lot of, I watched a lot of horror leading up to it. Uh, and it was like, you know, spring, summertime, you know, before we started shooting in the summer. So, you know, I had the two months to prepare and, uh, you know, usually I, you know, I'll, I'll watch tons of horror movies, you know, once the fall comes around. So it kind of felt weird in this, in the spring, summer, just, you know, nonstop watching horror. I think my fiance kind of started to get over it. She'd walk into the room and I'm sitting there watching like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and she's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, it was, you know, I, I kind of, I started to, to kind of form, uh, you know, my wardrobe with it as well. Uh, that really helped a lot once, you know, you kind of get a vision for, for what the character looks like and, and, you know, and how, how, once you're in the wardrobe, it really starts to make you act that certain way. You know, I got ripped up jeans and I got a flannel that I, that I cut the sleeves off of and, you know, and a beater and kind of just, you know, tried to, tried to find it. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was fun. It was fun, you know, trying to, trying to find them. And, you know, I was, I, I think I was listening to like a lot of, a lot of old school like Eminem and uh, you know just that uh, you know crazy you know deranged killer kind of kind of vibe and you know trying to trying to find it but you know it was it was fun trying to, trying to my fiance doesn't think it was fun when I was trying to find find the character again, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was it was a good time so I think I think I did a, a pretty I'm hoping I did a I did a pretty good job so we'll see how many shoot how many shooting days was it were there. So altogether, I think we shot it um, over. So we were days here and days there with, with, you know, with an indie film, you know, people work during the week. So we were shooting most weekends um, and, you know, every, every, I got a, I got a day job that I, that I got to be at. Uh, but then I started, you know, we, I think we started on weekends in July and then we ended by, um the end of like the end of september i think all together we were looking at about 20 days all together for 15 to 20 days all together to shoot to shoot the whole film which i think is about an hour and 30 minutes or so so 
Okay. So so where did y'all film the film at exactly? So we shot it at a great location out in Mount Holly, New Jersey. My director Marius Reddo's from from Jersey. Uh, and it's where he shoots most of his most of his films. Uh, we shot it out in Mount Holly, and there was a he he had a friend out there that um, that was working on a house, uh, and it was pre it was pre COVID um, when you know this guy bought this. It's like a lake house out there, and so the guy rips everything apart. You know, there's took all the drywall off the walls. Like I was refinishing, was planning on refinishing the whole home. And then I guess COVID hit and he kind of slowed down on it. So, you know, Mario reached out to one of his friends and asked him to be, you know, a location scout. And he was like, you know, I have the perfect place for you. And Mario says, you know, when he first showed up to the spot, he, I mean, even when I first showed up to the spot, I mean, you knew that this was, this was the house. It was, you know, it's right, it's right, it's all the way in the backwoods. It's, you know, right up, right up against the river right there. There's a nice deck in the back. And then as soon as you walk into the house, it's like, you know, it looks like the place is falling apart because it's, you know, they were, they were re they were in the middle of refinishing the home. So, but that summer they, uh, you know, they kind of let us film there before they, you know, started everything back up. And it was because we play a cannibalistic family and it really, it really looks like, you know, we were just straight from hell. <laughs> okay. I can't wait to see it. I definitely want to check this out. I definitely yeah, do. Good. What um what are some what is what's like the wildest thing that happened on set while filming this movie? Oh man. Uh I mean there's there's a lot. So what what he what um, Mario used was you know a lot a lot of the budget goes and in and in this kind of horror is a lot of it goes into your fake body parts or your meats and you know to really to really give off that that look that it's you know that it's real. Um, there's, you know, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's, there's a few moments in there that, you know, I, we use cow intestines, uh, on, uh, you know, one of, one of, uh, my co-stars Gia, Gia Banner, um, was, uh, you know, kind of covered in cow intestines at the moment. And, you know, we're, 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 you know, using actual, you know, animal meats and this and that. And then, uh, that kind of got a little, a little crazy. And then there's a, there's a feast in it, you know, it's, uh, as in the name feast in the forest and you know when and uh our the director you know goes out and buys you know all these different meats and you know steaks and and stuff like that and i think i ate like 20 pounds of steak that day oh, trying man. to give off <laughs> trying to give off the impression that i'm eating somebody and we are like by the end of it i had the meat sweats i was I was like, oh, God, I don't think I can ever look at meat ever again. Some of the meat was, like, sitting out there all day after we cooked it, and then we oh. keep on taking takes. So, yeah, it was, uh, it's not It's not a good uh, movie for vegans. <laughs> 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 but, uh, and then, and then one of the craziest is there's a, there's a chainsaw scene. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything. It's, it's actually in, in one of the trailers, um. But it's a it's a clip of, uh, you know, we, we actually used a, a real chainsaw and uh, just took the, you know, took the blades off it. Uh, and, you know, we have this this girl tied up in our basement, which which was great. We used a location that was like these old school, uh, like gym locker showers, like the old ones where it still had like the pull down hose, like the metal chain you pull down and the shower starts. And uh, we had a whole chainsaw scene with fake blood and this and that. And and the girl that, you know, was 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 in the scene, Christina Aponte, um, she she did a great job. But she was, uh, you know, she was supposed to be getting cut up. And we leave the room in the scene to have someone else come in and cut her up for us. And we're in the other room and she's screaming at the top of her lungs with this chainsaw blaring. And we're mm. all in this other room, the rest of us, me, Nick Brennan, uh, uh, Ali Batat. Like we are all looking at each other like, what the bleep and just her screams were like it's, it's like you wanted to run in and save her like you know it's it was just it was toe curling so but she did a great job so there's there's a lot of there's a lot of fun scenes in this film i definitely can't wait to see this i love like the slasher genre i love like oh, the texas chainsaw and all of that yeah hatchet all yeah. of those and i yeah. feel like this this could definitely be a permanent staple in the horror community if y'all keep going with it because this is part two if y'all keep going, yep. it could definitely be a per a permanent staple in the front just yep. in horror in general. I love you it. You never know. There, there might be a third one around the corner. Okay. <laughs> I mean I'm here for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> you, you gotta watch the second one first though. 
Oh yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to tap into that. Where where will it be available at? Like after I know you're doing it at the at the casino on Saturday. I don't know if I can make it down there. I'm gonna try, but where else will it? Where else can we see it at? So there is. Um, so the first one uh, was actually on Troma. Troma is uh, one of these uh, big like horror streaming sites. It's from uh, the. The, the guy, uh, Lloyd Kaufman, producer, director, writer, uh, he did like... Um, Toxic um, Avenger uh, and all that. Yeah. Tox- yep. Toxic Avenger. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was, the first one's on Troma, and then also you can, you know, if you want the hard copy, it's on, it's on the Human Hibachi franchise website. Uh, and then the second one, I know that we're doing a festival run right now. Uh, it starts this Saturday at the at Atlantic City Showboat Casino for the New Jersey Horror Con and Film Festival. Uh, we're actually up for for best feature film, uh, which I'm I'm really Congrats the on first that. one won the first one won best feature last year, and and I'm hoping to you know to win the second one this year. But as far as distribution wise, I haven't touched back with Mario uh, about it in a little bit, but he has a whole plan of, of you know of who's picking it up and, and how it's going the first the first one was actually also on uh, on walmart shelves that it, it sold uh, it sold in 19 different countries across the world oh so, congrats pretty, on that it, I, yeah, see I, yeah. I love hard copies so if, if y'all do a hard copy for two i'm definitely buying that too i'm gonna need an autograph for one of y'all or, you yeah, know? Yeah, but i'm definitely does, gonna pick does. up one <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he does like the whole. If you go through the website, he, you know, he has he signs it, has some people sign it, and you know, and, and then sends it sends it all out. So it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. So okay. excited. I like that hashtag that what you said. That could be a hashtag or a quote. What you said, the vegans won't like it. If you're a vegan, you won't like it. That's, that's that'd be great marketing for the film too. Just saying it. <laughs> great idea. The number it's one anti-vegan it. movie or something. You know, I like that. I like the way you put that. Yeah, it's a good that's a good hashtag, man. I'll remember that. I'll put that up top to Mario. Tell him you said it. No, you said that was yours. I, I'm just quoting <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, you, you, said the, you said the hashtag, man. We just want 50 50 in on that. Uh, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's great. Well, do y'all have like merchandise too, like t shirts and posters? So I know. I know for the first one, um, uh, he was he was making T-shirts. There are T-shirts out for the first Human Abachi. Uh, I have to touch base with him because I'm hoping for him to do you know T-shirts, sweatshirts because because I gotta I gotta get myself one as well. I can't I, I gotta get myself a T-shirt. So, mm-hmm. but I know that I know that he's been making uh, merchandise for the franchise through the years. It would it would be on the website. I think it's humanabachifranchise.com. Okay. I think that's it. I'm gonna put all of that in the show notes and everything. I'm, I'm definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Now, I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on. So, th- and this is I see that you did like the evil lives here, and Thailand's of the Phoenix. Like, yes. So, so. Go okay, ahead. I'm sorry. No, you can go. go I'm sorry. I don't want to chop you. Go ahead. No, 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 it's okay. It's all right. So, so a lot of it, I did. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff on my IMDb was you know through the through the past couple of years of of trying to make a name for myself and, and get myself out there. So, you know, the, the evil lives here was, was a great starting point because there, you know, it was, the, it was a little bit of smaller roles and, and working my way into it. And it's on, uh, you know, the, the, um, the true, the t- discovery or true, true, uh, discovery channel. Um, and, uh, you know, I got, I have a couple scenes in a few different episodes and, you know, kind of just really, you know, for a starting point, it really worked me up to, to being on these sets and, and getting into characters and, you know, kind of understanding the flow of things, uh, you know, but with that, then, then, you know, in the past, the past like year or two has been, has been very good to me from, you know, from a growing standpoint in the industry, uh, you know, from, from all the work that I did the first, you know, three years in it, uh, and the connections I made and the networking I did, I, I kind of, you know, started to get these different opportunities to grow and, and be in these, these bigger features. What, what got you into acting? Uh, so it's a little bit of a long story, but I'll shorten it for you. I was, uh, I started almost five years ago. Uh, this November, 2022 will be five years. I know that because I, I kind of take my career a year at a time. Uh, when Thing. My my whole life, I knew that you know I, I wanted to do something with film. It's just when I was younger, I didn't get in the theater, I didn't go to school for it, but I loved watching film and TV shows and breaking it down and breaking down characters. I mean, to a point to where I would watch a film and and then you know reverberate what the actor said and how they said it. 
just to, you know, see, see if I could, if I could do it. And I started to find, you know, a confidence in it on my own. I just, I guess I was too embarrassed to start, uh, what, you know, people would think around me. And then, uh, you know, and then, and then it was, you know, I thought that maybe I was, I was too old. I was, you know, I was what, 20, 26 when I started. And, you know, for some reason I thought that, you know, maybe I needed to go to school for it. And then, uh, I have a really good friend that's, that's a director from the area and he was shooting a music video and he gives me a call and he said, you know, Hey, do you want to come out and be a PA for the day? Just, you know, see how film works. And I said, yeah, of course I, I jumped at the idea. Uh, I was going through a little bit of a, of a rough time. And, you know, I, at the time I, I recently lost my mother and, you know, I was trying to, I was kind of low and, and I was trying to figure out, you know, what makes me happy and, you know, and what I can do, you know, for the rest of my life. And he gives me the call and, you know, I was excited about it. And then, um, I jumped at the idea and the actor for the project didn't show up and it was kind of a uh, scripted music video. Uh, so they turned to me and they said, Hey, you know, you're, we need a, a male to, to jump in. And I jumped on in and, and I acted across um, uh, this actress. And at the end of the first take, you know, she, she turned to me and, uh, and said, you know, Hey, you're, you're pretty good at this. You know, how long, you've, how long have you been an actor? And I turned to her and I said, you know, this, this is my first day. Not to you know, toot my own horn on it, but I was you know, I was just I was very excited at the time, and I was you know I, I was like it's my first day, and she was like wow you know you should get into this, and my friend said you know hey man if you really like it then get headshots and start the career up. So the next week I think I went out got some headshots and you know and I I kind of just started from the bottom. So you know but uh, that's 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 how I first I first caught the bug and and fell in love with the industry. So. It's good. I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy for you too. That's that's a real interesting story. What 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 keeps you going? Like, how many projects have you acted in first? Um. So at first, within within the first year, I was, you know, I was I was trying to find, you know, the the guidelines. I was trying to find out, you know, how how what's the path? What's the journey to becoming an actor? And that's, you know, that's why I really, I, I think I really fell in love with this industry is because there's no, there's no set path for anyone. It's, you know, you, you kind of, you kind of make your own way, find your own connections. You know, you, I mean, you, you study the craft and make sure that, you know, you're good at what you do, you know, you, you're, and that first year it was, it was more just, you know, going around and I got on, you know, backstage and, and started to audition for things. I only had, you know, a couple headshots, no reels. And, you know, I, I got a couple lucky opportunities that, you know, were short films and, and smaller commercials and, you know, and, and I went out and did these things for pretty much free. You know, I mean, at the time it's, you know, when you're first becoming an actor, you just, you gotta just get out there. You gotta experience it. Uh, I was doing like a lot of extra work as well. So I was going up to New York from Philly, which is, you know, two hour drive just to get there every morning. Uh, and I was going up to New York weekly, but it wasn't so much of being an extra and, you know, seeing how the sets go. It was more just talking to people and, and understanding what their what their path was, what their journey is. Do they take a class? You know, how, how did they get to the point that they're at? Like, what else do they do um, to where, you know, I did that for a while. And then I realized that, you know, I, I really should be in an acting class and really honing in on, on my craft. Uh, so I joined. I joined an acting class uh, in Swarthmore, PA, called the Actors Co-op. Uh, I trained under Larry Jansen and Pete Postiglione, which are, you know, very, very fine at, at the craft and, and really, you know, really great at what they do. So I, I owe them a lot for, you know, showing me, uh, you know, the ropes and, and, and really helping me with my craft. But uh, then I, you know, I, I just took it each year at a time. I said that first year, I said, you know, by the end of this year, by next November, if I'm if I'm not succeeding in this industry or, you know, if I don't think that I can possibly do it, then, you know, what, it's not for me. I'll hang it up. The end of the year done. It was a fun year. Let's see what happens. And, you know, I got short films. I got commercials and, you know, found the act place and, and I really loved it. So the next year I was like, OK, let's let's bump this up a little bit and see, you know, hey, can I get can I get into a feature film, you know, just an indie film and, and get a get a role in something, you know, a little bit bigger. And, you know, from there, from there, I just really started to grow. And, and just like any other industry, it's or any other business, it's it's the time and the effort that you put into the craft and, and networking. And, you know, you, you kind of get out of it what you put into it. So, okay. From for our listeners and from your experience, 
What were the benefits of going to an acting school such as the Actors Co-op? Oh, it, it, it changed it changed my life. And honestly, it um, you know you 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 think you know you you know acting and you know you get a lot of people that that want to be an actor and and jump you know onto set and but there's there's so much to come with it you know I mean my my favorite part about it all is is you know character breakdowns is you know hey you know they would because they would give you you know some a script or you know a few pages to you know to work on in class and and uh, you know. I, I would used to, when I first started, just jump right on in, you know, think that I, you know, had it, no problem. And then, you know, the, the teacher would be like, all right, well, you know, uh, why are you doing this? Where, like, who are you? Where'd you come from? Like, you know, you're, you're who, what, when, where, and why? And then, you know, then you, you don't have the answers. And then, you know, you slowly start to learn that, you know, hey, if you, you know, if, if in a film, you know, you come in on this character at this point in his life, what was, you know, where was the last 30 years? Like, you know, what, what, what took him to this point to, you know, to become this man or woman and, and get to this point. Uh, so, you know, they, they really taught me a lot with, with character breakdowns and, and I really, you know, when I'm, when I go out and I talk to, to new actors that are just starting out, you know, I tell them, I was, you know, jump right into an acting class as soon as you can. Um, they actually had my, my favorite part about it all was they, they had a woman named Karen Giordano come down from, from New York who runs an acting class up there. Um, and uh, she came in for a, a, a week long intensive. I think it was five or six days straight for three hours a day. And um, she she taught us all about the chakras and your energy system and, you know, and where to pull certain energies from, where to pull where, where to pull, you know, your memories from how to how to hone that in and, you know, and get to a spot, you know, quicker so that, you know, when they when they're ready to shoot, you're you're already in that emotion. And this woman, I mean, she really, she really changed my life within that week. You know, I, I felt like, you know, she guided me on the right path to understanding, you know, not just roles, but who I am as, as an actor, uh, and really, you know, dug, dug deep in. And I mean, by, by the end of the week, I had a, I had a, um, um, I had a monologue that, you know, I was, I was like a doctor and, you know, someone died on my table and, you know, at the beginning of the week, she had me, she had me do it. And, you know, and I was tripping up on my lines and, and this and that. And then with the whole week, we work on chakras, energy systems, being comfortable in your space. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, and then at the end of the week, she, you know, she says, all right, you know, you're up first, go ahead and, and, you know, run through the monologue. And by the end of it, you know, the, I had tears running down my face, just, you know, feeling, feeling this, you know, this person that died on my table and, you know, and, and, and the sorrow that, that came with it. And, you know, it really, it blew me away. It really, it really changed uh, the way that I just look at acting as a whole. So. So what is the auditioning process like? And what are some tips for auditioning? Uh, well, it depends. Uh, you know, when, when you first start, it's, you know, it's kind of nerve wracking, uh, you know, but it's, you learn, you learn to become comfortable. Okay. So in, you know, what, what you learn through, you know, talk, I've talked to a lot of veteran actors and, you know, and acting coaches and friends and, you know, it's, it's the, the thing that stuck with me the most is, you know, after a couple of years of auditioning was, you know, I heard that, you know, you, you run the room. It is, it is your room when you walk into it. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, yeah, they're, they're looking for, you know, certain things, but you know, as soon as, as soon as you walk into that room, I got, you know, I, I got it stuck into my head that, that now this is my room. You are also in my room while I'm, you know, presenting you with, with, you know, with, with what I'm trying to, you know, express. So, you know, I used to, I used to, you know, really get nervous and, and I mean, I still get nervous, you know, before, before walking into a room and, and, you know, and auditioning, but I really, I found the confidence in just, you know, you, you really can't worry about it. You can't care too much because the second that you're overstressing it and you're worrying about it, then you're not, you're not going to be real and it's not going to come out the way that you want it to. Uh, you know, you just gotta, you gotta find a connection with that character and Hey, do something different. Always do something different. Like they're, they're expecting something out of you. Just, you know, try, try to do something out in left field and, you know, and, and, and different and, and just kind of blow them out of the water. But with, with zoom these days, you know, it's, it's a little bit harder because I, I really miss being able to walk into a room and having people feel my energy. 
I like to, you know, I'm a big believer in energy and, and, and how you can fill the room with it. And, you know, I, I miss, I miss being able to, it's, you know, you have once one or two every once in a while where it's in person, but you know, I miss being able to be in person, walk into a room and present them, you know, and show them who exactly I am. So when you're doing it over zoom, you really have to, you know, try and, uh, try and be a little bit more, you know, over the top to, you know, to, to show them who you are and, and stand out a little bit. But. Okay. So do you method act or do you, cause you mentioned the chakras and, and everything yeah. uh, with teaching. Do you method act? I try to not, uh, not to a crazy extent where, you know, I'm saying I'm staying in character forever, but when I, you know, when I start to, to prep for, uh, you know, different films and, and things that I'm in, I, I really, I really try to dive deep. You know, I'll listen, I'll listen to the music that I think that character listens to, you know, I'll watch, I'll watch TV and film that, you know, that correlates with that character and, you know, and, and try to really get into a headspace with it. Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm on set, I like to, I like to stay there, but you know, when they yell cut, I'm not, I'm not fully staying in that character, but I'm trying to stay in the mindset. So, you know, if it's, if it's a tough scene to get through, then, you know, when they yell cut, I, I won't, you know, I won't mess around or, you know, or, or talk to other people. I'll just stay in my headspace until they say action again so that I'm staying in that space. But, you know, I mean, there's been people on set that, that ask me if I'm a method actor, I guess, because, you know, when they yell, when they yell cut, everyone else is, you know, kind of messing around and I'm kind of just still in that space. But uh, I really, I, I mean, to an extent, you know, I really do, I really do believe in, in the method acting. It's just, I try not to go over the top with it. So how long do you prepare your line? Like how long do you study for your role and prepare for your role? So it depends on the project, uh, okay. for, you know, for, for this movie that I have, uh, coming out, um, human Abachi two feast in the forest. It was, I play a, a cannibal in it. And for that, I, uh, you know, I got, I got the script, uh, I think two months ahead of time. And for that, you know, I was really excited to play a villain. So, you know, I really, I dove right into the script and, you know, and I would mark up every page, you know, I print out the script, I mark everything up, you know, and, and say, you know, my, my actions that I like with that, you know, maybe some lines that I want to try out or, or mix up. So, you know, I'll start, I'll start as soon as I get the script It's just depending on, you know, how big the role is and, and all that, but it's, it's always in the back of my mind. And, you know, every once in a while I'll pick up the script and, you know, at least a couple of times, say that if I was two months out, then a couple of times a week, I'll pick up the script while I'm sitting on the couch and, you know, start to run through it. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, if they're longer monologues or, you know, or more difficult scenes, I'll, I'll record them. Uh, you know, with me talking through them and then, you know, as I'm driving around or sometimes at the gym, I'll listen to the scenes, uh, just to, you know, prepare and, and make sure that I, that I have it down the, the way that I want it down. So, but then, you know, once you get on set, you know, a lot of it just goes out the window and you kind of feel the emotions and what the other actors are giving off. And, you know, as long as, as long as you know, the lines, you know, that, that's, that's the first, that's the first thing with me is, you know, know the lines, know every, you know, know everything that's happening on set so that, you know, as soon as they, you know, yell action and you're, and you're in it, you know, you don't have to sit there and think about what's next. It's already coming naturally. And then from there, you know, you can work out the emotions of what the other actors are giving off. Yeah. I know y'all tapped in, y'all listening. And I guess what? I appreciate y'all support. And I need one favor. I need you to hit that like, hit that share, hit that subscribe. Shit, leave a comment. Leave a comment on the YouTube page, Philly Celeb TV. You can leave a comment on Spotify, Apple Pod, wherever you're listening to it at. I appreciate y'all's support. Y'all helping the channel grow. And I'm going to keep providing y'all with dope content. Now back to the show. What is your favorite type of character to play? Oh God, that's that is uh, that's an easy question and a hard question. I love I love playing a villain. For you know the first three or so years, I was always you know just the cop, the the bartender, you know the the boyfriend. You know I was I was always just you know regular roles. Uh, it wasn't until I got this human abachi that you know I jumped into the villain role and I I fell in love. Like okay. I really got to bring something different to the screen and, and really, uh, you know, I mean, show, showcase my talents a little bit better and show, you know, and show what I could do, uh, playing, playing the villain. I mean, everybody says it playing the villain is the best. You get the best lines, you get the best actions. Like it's, you know, it, there, there's nothing better. So I think, 
I think Human Abachi is my favorite. Um, and then, you know, the World War II movie, playing, playing a Marine, that was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, and then, uh, you know, a couple of short films where I play some villains that'll be out in the next year if, if you follow me. So, but yeah, the villain's the best. That's it. Okay. Do you, do you have like a dream role that you would like to play? Or a dream? Oh, man. Uh, I did. I don't know if um if I'm if I aged out of it or not, but uh, <laughs> I'll, tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you I'll tell you a quick story. When I was when I was in kindergarten, uh, the teacher you know goes around and, and asks everyone what they want to be when they grow up, and uh, you know everyone's like you know a doctor or you know or this or that a firefighter a cop, and you know I wrote down I'm, that's, I'm still trying to figure out why I wrote down Robin. As in, I was really big into Batman and Robin at the time, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, why wouldn't you write down Batman? And I was like, I don't know. I guess I just, you know, I really liked, you know, I really liked Dick Grayson and, you know, the first Robin. And, you know, I just thought it was cool that you could hang out with Batman all day. I was like, why be Batman when you can hang out with him? Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was really, you know, I was really big into Batman, the animated series when I was younger. And then, you know, once I started getting into acting, I was like, wow, you know, like maybe I can, you know, become what you know what i said in kindergarten that i wanted to be what if i you know one day miraculously somehow play robin on on the big screen you know and then then my life would fully come full circle if that if i ever got into you know a dc film or, or something like that that would you know i i love i love you know dramas and and you know and and art films i, I really have a passion for them but you know these big superhero films i mean you know they they just look like so much fun to be able to bring, you know, my favorite comics to life one day. So that's that would be the ultimate dream. Okay. That's that's still possible. I believe that's possible. Yeah, I think so. It's a it's a so. DC, I'm sure it's a DC multiverse like storyline where Robin is old where is an older Robin. But I believe yeah, I, could, I would to like say to see I'm old? That. No, you say I mean you say, I don't think you I don't think you old at all. I mean <laughs> I don't think. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> you gave us a lot of information and a lot of tips. I just want like, again, just like three top tips for up and coming actors, or you can go to five if you want, just like for any aspiring actors or up and coming actors. Yeah. Um, let's see. Number one, I mean, jump, jump right into training, jump right into an acting class, you know, find, find your niche, you know, find out, find out if you really, if you really love it, there's never, and then stay in it, you know, jump, jump around acting classes, you know, you're not, you're not, you know, cheating on your, on your, you know, on your acting coach, you know, you want to see different, different perspectives and get, you know, different, uh, different looks at, at the acting world. So I would say, you know, number one, jump, jump right into an acting class. And then, you know, number two would be, you know, when you're first, when you're first starting out, you know, it's, you, you got to do as much as you can. You got to, you know, put your name out there. You got to audition for things. I can't tell you how many things I did that I got no pay for just to have, you know, a picture of me or, you know, uh, you know, a re just to put together a reel, just to have, you know, some kind of work out there. And then, you know, with it comes comes connections. So, you know, you do something for free and then, you know, you, you make you make friends for, you know, for a lifetime. When I first started acting, I still talk to those people that I did, you know, my first projects with and they're they're growing and doing well in the industry, you know, and I'm growing and doing well. And, you know, we, you stay in touch and, you know, if anything ever comes around then then, you know, you work together, you help each other out. So and then and then, yeah, I mean, number number three would be, you know, stay with, uh, you know, find your niche, find find your friends in the industry. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that, that are out there that want to tear you down or, you know, or or, you know, they're worried that, you know, you're going to take roles from them or, or something like that, which I just I never I never understood if if someone's doing well, then, you know, then then I'm a champion for them. And, you know, and I want them to do well and succeed and, you know, and continue on on this on this journey. Uh, you know, I, I, I found a really tight group of friends uh, in this industry that, you know, we just kind of we lift each other up and, you know, and then send each other different auditions or roles that are that are out there that we see and, you know, give give each other a hand hand you know start start a start a little you know a little a little group and and you know and start to start to branch out together you know it's it's easier together than than alone but you know just it's all the time that you put into it be, be nice to everybody you know there's no there's no point of leaving your house in the morning and and wanting to be angry and you know i mean it's it's the best job in the world it is to me it is the best job in the world so when i'm on set i am having the most fun I, you know, I've, I've, I've ever dreamed of. Doesn't matter what the project is. So there's, there's a, a famous poem out there. 
Uh, it's called, um, oh God, what's it called? It's called On the Road to Ithaca. I forget who wrote it. Uh, but, you know, it's all about, you know, it's it's all about enjoying the journey. It's not it's not so much about the destination and and once you get there, you know what you know the, you, you can you can make it to the top and you're lonely and you know you 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 know you you have nothing to show for it. But you know what what matters the most is is the journey that you took to get there. I know it sounds cliche, but you know it's it really is it really is you know what what you do to get there and, and the memories that that you make. So you gotta you gotta stop and smell the roses every once in a while. So those are my three.